Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have the long-awaited second part story, scary time, <laughs> scary, st <laughs> scary story time video about a, a haunted um, work experience, I guess, something like that. So yeah, um, like I said, there's going to be a picture that I have about a ghost and stuff like that. So if you guys want to keep on watching, make sure to stay tuned. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And yeah, we'll get into this. And I'm going to be eating, you guys. So just a little heads up. I'm munching on some pizza. Pizza, pizza, pizza. 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 pizza on yeah. some pizza. <laughs> but yeah. So I hope you guys stay tuned and let me know what you guys think. And yeah, hope you guys like the video. So like I was saying, I worked there for about three years. And yeah, so right off the bat, like stuff happened to me there. Like people would joke around and like the managers would be like, oh, like this, this department is haunted. Because where I worked at was at this mall and like it was a huge JCPenney. So right off the bat, like something happened to me. So... I remember I think it's it was like my third or fourth shift I had to work an overnight um, so I, I had to go in like at four or so, four or five in the morning so like was is that overnight no like a morning I guess I don't remember but that that kind of shift is for like visuals and like for markdown people and stuff like that so they wanted to see if I was good at doing that so they could move me there because they needed people in that department or that doing that stuff so I went and like I said that store was huge so that day I went in um, the store manager at the time she was like go with um, this lady called Teresa like go talk to her and like tell her what she has to have you do so I went with her and she was like, oh, we're going to start doing markdowns. And she was like this like little yejita Mexican lady. So she was like, oh, like telling me in Spanish, like, oh, go grab like these, um, these little papers to do reticketing. She's like, you have to go to the reticketing room. So the reticketing room is by the women's department, but all the way in the back. So there, were, there was a lot of little doors, but in that specific room, it was like a stock room slash reticketing room. So as soon as you walk in, like, they're, like, censored lights. So as soon as you walk in, they're supposed to turn on. And they weren't working. I don't know if it was because it was early in the morning or something. But they didn't turn on. So I just took my phone out and I put the flashlight. So as soon as you walk in, um, there's, like, a little room. Like, as soon like, you legit open the door and there's a little door right here. And that's, like, the reticketing room. And then the rest all, like, the entire rest of the warehouse was, like, a stock, like, stock, new merch stuff, whatever. So... I had to go into that little room and in the little room obviously the, the other light inside that room didn't turn on either so I'm like okay like she said to pull the wheel like it was like this huge like circle so cir circular wheel with like new um, tags that we had to use so like I go in and I turn and I'm facing the wall where the wheel is so I'm like I'm pulling and I put my phone down but the, the flashlights like shining up so I'm pulling the wheel like to get tickets because I didn't want to take the whole thing because she said just like rip some off so I'm pulling and I feel like this, like that sensation or that feeling where like somebody's watching you and I was just like, uh, like I got goosebumps everywhere. And as soon as like, I was like thinking that to myself, I'm like, oh, like I feel like I was thinking like, dude, I feel like someone's watching me. And as soon as I said that, I felt someone grab, like grab my shoulder on this side, like just like put their hand on my shoulder and like touch me, like squeeze like my shoulder. And I like panicked so bad, like I left everything there. Like I didn't even grab my phone or anything. Like I just fucking ran outside. And I had to run from the women's department all the way to the home department. And I was so freaking scared. And I run to Teresita and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's like, she tells me in Spanish, like, what's wrong? It's, it seems like you've seen a ghost. And I was like, bitch, like, cause there's a motherfucking ghost. And I was like, yeah, like, like I was like crying. I was practically in tears. I know I was crying and like, I was so embarrassed cause it was my first time working with that specific team in the morning. And then they're like, what happened? And I explained to them what happened and she starts laughing. She's like, hi, mija. She's like, um, she's like, it's the ghost. Like we know, like in that room, like they scare you, like espantan. And I was like, and you sent me, like, why would you send me to go there, you know? But like they already knew and then that's when they started telling me like certain things happen and like 
people started telling us like throughout like the time that I started working there that a lot of things would happen and then another thing that happened to me was um, one of my favorite managers her name's Ramona she um, was teaching me how to do the signage change for like Black Friday or I don't know I think it was Black Friday or something like that Cyber Monday or something and she was like I need you to go upstairs and we're gonna go grab the signs and she's like but go upstairs first and see if you can get them if not I'll show you where they are and I was like okay where are they and she's like you have to go upstairs so at that specific store we only had one floor but the top floor was for like mannequins like fixture back stock and like our break room and manager's office so as soon as you go up like pretend like you're going up the stairs and stuff you you stop here this side is where like the break room and then manager's office locker rooms and all of that shit's on this side and then on this side is where it's like all the mannequins all the fixtures like other rooms with like certain things so she tells me you have to go that way so i'm like okay and i was like i didn't think much of it again i was like you know like i it's been a while since i was scared there so i was like you know like nothing's gonna happen but then once i started to realize that i had to pretty much walk way further back into that like the like the stock room upstairs i started to kind of panic and like i freaked myself out so i was like okay like you know what what if someone's here and like dude i had to pass like so many mannequins like just like headless mannequins like just heads of mannequins like it was really creepy so you have to go into like this room and the first room the like when you go into the room there's one sensormatic like light all across so as soon as i walk in like it turns on i'm like okay like cool and then where I need to get the signage is like it's kind of like a divided room but it had no doors or anything so it's just like a room where you walk in kind of but that one had like a little pole like like a wooden stick kind of like sticking out in the middle and you had to flip the switch on for the lights to turn on so um I was like I didn't know I've never been in there so I was like like stomping on the floor I'm like why is it not turning on so then I turned to the little light and I'm like oh I have to flip this one on so I flip it on and I'm looking through like this stack of like papers and I have my walkie and I'm like Ramona which ones did you want me to get and she's telling me and then like I don't know where like my walkie starts like static like I know walkies already have static but it was like in order for that to have happened somebody was talking so somebody was saying something but my walkie I don't know it was just weird so I started to panic even more and then that room no one was there no one was upstairs everyone was downstairs because we were changing signs so no one was on their break no one no one was upstairs so i feel like the papers like i'm looking at all the papers i'm legit like some papers just fall off like a shelf from like like there was like a little table and like across from there because you can see from both ways so like where i was standing you legit had to go like this and go that way to exit so i get scared and i'm like okay like and i told ramona like i started patting i'm like hey i'm just gonna go downstairs like i didn't want to be there like i had this feeling i i shouldn't have been there so like my thing was like i'm just gonna come back upstairs with her like i'm gonna leave the lights on so keep in mind that little switch you have to switch it off in order for it to turn off so i already had goosebumps i was already like i don't want to be here so i go around the little table and i'm walking back but as soon as i step foot outside of the room i hear like a and i was like what the fuck and i got so scared i'm like dude like i know i heard something and my dumb ass like turns around and when i turn around the little room the second room the, the light was off like it was just off so like for, like I said for that shit to be turned off somebody had to flip the little switch off so I was like I freaking ran downstairs the the, the new store manager pretty much just told us that at that specific JC Penny that a customer was getting her hair her his hair washed and he had a heart attack there so he died there so they say that that person or something like haunted JC Penny and then another thing is that me and my dad actually looked into this mall and it used to be like an orphanage and like a graveyard or something like people would like the kids would be like like dug up there or something you know so i remember into that stock room that i'm telling that i told the first story about um it was me one of my friend named d and another girl we walked into the back and i remember like we were looking like it was christmas time and we were looking at the new merch that we were gonna get so like we're like being chismosas like hiding from the managers back then and like looking at stuff and then I went towards the back and I don't know why <clears throat> I had this like feeling like that something was back there so I remember like during those days was when me and my dad were like investigating or like looking into it because my dad worked in the mall too and I remember like going more towards the back and then I remember seeing a like a, one of the walls that was just empty but it looked like wallpaper was like kind of scratched off like pulled apart 
So I remember kind of walking closer to it and I'm telling him like, hey guys, look, come. And I remember looking at it and I remember peeling and I wish I had the picture, but I don't. When we looked at it, tell me why the wallpaper underneath was little ducks, like little teddy bears, like, like baby, like baby wallpaper, babe. Like baby wallpaper. And like, I was just like, long story short, I was frightened of this, this store like that I would not want to go anywhere by myself like they would be like Sarai go upstairs I'm like I'm not going by myself like you guys have to send someone with me like I'm not gonna go by myself like we would have to close registers and I'm like I'm not gonna go close this by myself like send someone with me or I would like FaceTime someone because I was that scared so all the managers would make fun of me back then they'd be like oh if you want to be a manager like you're gonna have to do this by yourself and I'm like well I'm not gonna do it here like no like I was so scared he had to close down and one of the managers Freddie um he sent us to the to the photo like the photo department because I guess the fucking lady forgot to close down her registers and she had to close them down so since she didn't we had to close them down so Freddie was like oh we're still closing home department and since you guys finished early go close the photo like the photo registers and I was like miss me with that shit no because there's another room in the photo like the photo room and that shit's dark and no one's over there anymore and there's like so many entrances to go in through there like the main entrance the outside entrance and then the little room like it was just creepy so i was like if i'm gonna go close it i want to go with d so he was like okay go but don't take long so we have to like legit turn our flash like lights on from our phone in order to go in to see so i'm counting the register but when we walk in like it's just this feeling like that you should not be there like it's just like I got chills everywhere and Dee's like Dee if any of you know Dee you know how Dee is and she's like no like it's okay come on it's like we're just standing there and the walkies start going crazy like both of our walkies and we're asking Freddie like can you hear us and my when I was I was next to her with my walkie but you couldn't hear and then I just remember we heard something in the photo room that so I'm closing the register here and there's a wall next to me so there was no one next to me and Dee was right here and I'm like, dude, like, I'm panicking. And I don't even know if I counted that register, right? I was just like, fuck this. Like, I got to go. Come on, boom, 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 you know? And then um, we hear something drop in the photo room, and we could have sworn. I don't know if she remembers, but I know we saw something walk by, and I started to freak. I was like, let's go. So I'm pushing her, and I grab the deposit bag, and we start, like, like speed walking. And at this time, at this point, I'm already FaceTiming this guy named David. So David worked with us, and he was at the home department with Freddie. So I'm FaceTiming him because everybody's waiting for us pretty much. So I'm like FaceTiming, but for some reason, like it just would not go. Like it just is not working. Like I don't, it was just my phone was glitching. Like it was being weird. So we're walking and we have to pass the men's department in order to get to the home department. So um, we FaceTime, I don't know, who, I don't know. I think it was David that answered and he's, he made a joke. But when he made the joke, we're passing the men's clearance and both of us were about to laugh at the joke and we heard someone laugh in the men's clearance like there's like racks and like lines of men's clearance clothes and we hear someone giggle like a guy giggle from inside the clothes and d like was just like she just stood there and i was like bitch i'm not gonna stand here with you to like figure out what that was so i legit book it like i started running in chanclas like i'm running i'm freaking running and I didn't even, I did not stop. I did not look back to see if D was behind me. I just started running into you. I just heard D, wait, where are you going? You know, and I'm like, Freddie, there's someone over there. Da, da, da. And my manager was so mad. And he was like, what if there's a customer here and you guys are running away from him? And like, now we have to check the whole store. So he goes with Michael and they check the whole store and no one's there. And I'm like, bro, like I'm telling you. And he goes, he, what did he say? He, he's like, oh, like you guys are crazy. But when he said we're crazy, tell me why the phone in the home department starts going off and um, like on every phone it tells you where it's calling from so if i called from women's it would say women's department or, or kids or whatever tell me why the phone starts ringing and it says men's department it says fucking men's department and no one's there all of us are standing waiting to like legit walk out and put the alarm and he just the manager just stays quiet he's like hello and no one's there and he's like dude like who's over there you know like who when he starts counting he's like no one's there and the intercom somebody like you and any department you can pick the phone up and like make like hey guys we're about to close whatever and you just like the fucking thing goes off and it's just like like breathing and we're like bitch what the fuck so like he starts freaking out. he's like i believe you i believe you and like he has to go upstairs and he doesn't want to go upstairs so he just puts the alarm i know and like we just leave so one night we were closing and i remember 
you have to like lock all the mall entrances because we were in a mall so you have to lock all the mall entrances pull the gates down put, lock it with the key like the side doors you had to lock them you have to lock the gate um and pull the gate down and put it with the lock for the truck like when we got our shipment in and then upstairs like we had to lock the top um so that specific night like i said it was two managers plus me and then the other associates so we closed registers we're like legit like already ready to go like leave go home and stuff and when you're trying to like clock like put the alarm it lets you know if something is locked or something isn't locked so you can't leave until everything's locked so freddie's putting the alarm and then the thing starts like going beep beep like it's saying that something isn't locked so we're like okay like well what is it and then it says that it's in the like towards the truck like the the back room like the back stock room like the huge stock room and he's like like why wouldn't it be locked you know like that's the first thing we always have to lock as soon as you get shimming you have to lock it so he's like okay like let's just go look so we're checking like the side rooms to make sure everything's closed he comes back and he's like okay like it was locked but i don't like you look kind of scared and he's like it's like it's locked we don't know what it is so he tries it again and it says error like door is not locked or what i don't know what the little thingy says so we have to go again we double check everything like the photo room men's department women's like the the mall entrance everything and everything is locked and he goes i haven't checked upstairs to see if the attic isn't like if it's locked or not like it's not an attic it's like a little like room to go up to the um to the roof like that's only for maintenance and we would never open that because why would we need it so he's like i'm gonna just go upstairs we're waiting for freddie and like freddie's going upstairs so we're like waiting and he tells me he's like go upstairs and i'm like i'm not gonna go upstairs i'm like you can fire me right here like i'm not gonna go upstairs like i straight up told him like i'm not gonna go upstairs like i'll straight up leave i don't even have to be here i was like it's like 10 o'clock like i was supposed to be off and i was that person that was like it's 10 o'clock i gotta go like i'm not about to stay longer uh-uh we we're already like 20 minutes into like checking every single door and i'm like i'm not about to go upstairs and risk my life for this like uh-uh i'm like jc penny ain't worth it and then he's like fine like he was just so fucking salty about this so he's like he goes upstairs all mad he's like when i say go like just check the alarm and i like i'll just run downstairs like it's not that far and it wasn't that far you know so he's like oh like just let me know if it what it says go like you know put the alarm or like check if it's locked and stuff but i could have sworn it was like maybe a minute or two and he just we just like turn and like we hear keys like jingling and when we turn like towards like the laundry department because it's right next to the home department we see homeboy like running like legit sprinting and he's like let's go let's go and i'm like what do you mean he's like put the alarm so he gives me the code and i'm putting it and it still says error and the lights just turn off like the fucking lights just go off like and they never turn off until everyone is outside and then the, the alarm goes off like the like it's locked like you know that's until after hours and only like one light per like per department is on but dude everything like everything turns off and we were all kind of like what the hell's going on he's like let's go let's go and he's i'm like well like it's not locked it's like i don't care like the police are gonna come right now so we go outside and he locks it and he's just like catching his breath but he looks so scared like i've never seen freddie this scared and i was like what the hell is going on so i'm like freddie like what happened he's like i don't want to talk about it like i don't want to talk about it and i'm like okay and he's like i believe you and i'm like what happened and he tells me that as soon as he goes upstairs um that when he's walking like i told you guys as soon as you get off the stairs like you can either go into the break room or go into the um the stock room so but you had to like you had to stand in the middle and you can legit see the doorways like anyone could see you so he says that he was gonna go to like towards the manager stuff to get the keys to see if it was locked upstairs but as soon as he starts walking that he felt someone like looking at him from the other side so he stops and goes like this and he hears someone fucking just go freddy but like from far in the in the stock room and that shit's like freaking huge and long like it'll take you like a good like five no no i'm exaggerating like like it'll take you like a long time to run like it's freaking far and like long and there's a bunch of man like i said mannequins fixtures like it's huge it has to hold a lot of things so he says he heard a girl like yell freddy but like really scary and that homeboy like did not wait because he heard someone like running so he just goes straight downstairs and that's what he told us he's like i was so scared that someone was gonna get me there that i just ran and like he was freaking like he was he was just like i don't care i don't care and the last story that happened to me um was with the manager ramona so we were counting the safes and i had to go upstairs with her to go um 
deposit the money upstairs so like i said um you can when you go upstairs you can go into the break room or whatever so we had to go this way this time so as soon as we're going upstairs um you have a computer on the side to clock in and clock out and then when you turn around there's like a little like it's called our cash office where we deposit all of our bank account like money from the registers and it was like a little tiny tiny little room so like legit you would just walk in like you could just fit in there like to like deposit stuff like that's it so i go up and as soon as i'm walking up ramon is like she, like she's telling me to be quiet because she's writing on the thing and i thought okay like she's concentrating but she's like listen and i'm like okay so you're look we're looking into the manager's office so it's the store manager's um office right here and then there's desks for all the other managers and then there's another desk and there's our conference room so our conference room is all the way in the back and then on this side of like there's like a wall blocking it but there's nothing there like you can't walk and go anywhere else but um there's just like a coffee machine like chairs like our snacks and stuff so we're just like you know i'm like like sh what like what am i listening to so we're looking and on everything i love she's like I, I heard and saw someone and I'm like no I'm like well who's up here and she's like no one like just me and you're like pero escucha she's like but listen I'm like okay so I'm just standing there and I told her I'm like Ramona like I don't want to be here I'm like you know how scared I am she's like I know Nina that's why listen you're gonna believe me so I'm like okay so we're standing there and fucking oh my god from the conference room on everything on from the conference room we see a guy a freaking tall guy in a button up white shirt with black slacks like just like not even walking like touching the ground like just like like just move like this like not even like you know how when someone walks you see them move like not even moving just like fucking like like hovering or something like from the conference room into the other side and I was like when I seen that shit I was gonna cry I feel like crying I like ah like I was like I just stayed like this room was like I told you and she fucking starts going in there she's running in there and i'm like ramona like let's go and she goes and i see her like from where i'm standing and she's like standing there she's looking and she's like there's no one here like there's no one here i'm like okay like can we go so we go downstairs and she starts telling everyone and i'm like can we just like walk outside and talk about this outside yeah for the most part that's like all the stories i have for jc penny and then i have a couple more just for tilly's at this other job i worked at so at tilly's um nothing really happened until after i started working with our two workload girls um our visual merchandiser cynthia and the her workload girl which is jackie so after i started hanging out with them and like opening with them because we would come in like at five in the morning and like do like change walls and stuff like that update stuff so i would be the opening manager so i would have to work with them and then do my like opening like procedures and stuff like that the first thing that happened was um we were trying to scare because cynthia me and jackie would scare a bunch of people like we would like set it set each other up to scare them or we would scare each other like if i opened with them they would get there earlier to scare me or vice versa and i remember jackie and i were trying to scare cynthia and we did scare her and then the second time jackie and i were going to do it again and then we hear the racks behind us by the fitting rooms like start moving like you hear them move and me and jackie fucking freak so we start running like we just start running towards the front and cynthia got scared because she saw us running towards her so we like booked it outside and we tell her and i have a video of it on snapchat she's like dude like the racks were moving and i'm like i told you guys like you know it's just like scary things like that and then another thing that happened was um one of one of our close friends his name's ivan he would scare me too he was he's like a little brother to me and he would always try to scare me or like he was like it was like a brother sister relationship like we would always be like on each other's nerves and stuff and i see i do see ivan towards the fitting rooms like talking to whoever was there so i'm like okay i'm like he's probably gonna come right now so we have like a blind spot where you can't see towards the manager's office like when you're walking up to it you can only see in front of the door so i'm like oh like i was already like sketched out i was like oh, i feel like he's gonna come up so i hear footsteps and i'm like okay and i'm like ivan and he doesn't respond i'm like this motherfucker is gonna scare me like he's gonna pop out and then i just hear giggling like he like like a boy giggle like in a weird giggle and i was like what why would ivan laugh like that so i'm like ivan i swear to god if you scare me like i'm gonna kick your ass he no response and like i hear the thing move even closer so i legit like get up off the floor because i'm counting the money on the floor and i get up and i have the money i'm like i told you it's not funny 
and like I legit peek my head out and there's no one there like legit no one and I'm like I still have my head out and I'm like Ivan like if you come out I'm gonna like scream I swear to you like stop it's not funny and as soon as I say that I like I turn to the thing and Ivan's in the front of the store and then like I start walking out like I'm fucking scared like I left the safe open and everything and then Ivan's like oh like I was about to scare you and I told him like were you back there He's like, no, and I told him, and I was like, dude, someone was back there. Like, I heard something, and everyone was just quiet. Like, no, like, you're crazy. Like, you're just hearing things. I'm like, I swear to you guys, someone was back there. You guys agreed on wanting me to make another video on it. So, what happened this specific day, it scares me, because I have a picture of it. <laughs> but, um, it was me and Hogar. We were both closing, and... We were like recovering and we're already done. We were gonna get out early. So we're like, you know, let's just kind of touch things up. And Hogar starts telling me like, he was like, oh, like has anything scary happened to you ever? Like after what had happened and stuff like that. And I was like, no, like nothing has happened recently. I'm like, um, and he's like, tell me scary stories. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, if I say scary stories, like usually when I say things, like things start to happen. He's like, nah, like no, nothing's gonna happen. I'm like, dude, like I'm telling you something always happens to me. He's like, come on, like, come on. And I'm like, okay. So I started telling him like all of the scary stories that I told you guys from JCPenney and like from my house and stuff. So I started telling him the stories and we hear things like in the back, like we can hear things being moved and like he was just like, dude, like it's weird. And, and I remember every time we had to close over there, you had to switch for the fitting rooms. And whoever I would close with, I would never open the handicap fitting room because one time I was closing that that specific handicap door like just slammed on its own. So I would always tell him like don't don't open that one like just leave it don't even swiffer in it just leave it like that. So this specific night he he swiffered in it he he cleaned the the fitting room and I was already thinking like uh, something's gonna happen because that door never gets open like it's just weird it was a bigger fitting room. So I'm in the back I'm counting everything I'm sending my nightly my nightly email to my DM. And we're talking and like we're kind of freaked out because we're still telling scary stories and while I was counting in the safe like we were hearing things and he was just like oh like you can tell Hogar's demeanor like changed like he was kind of like in that mode where he was like let's go home like I'm freaked out like I don't want to be here and I was like seeing him like that I was just like damn like if a guy is scared like I'm like uh, I want to go home so I was like writing on it and then Hogar sitting on a little like stool that's lower than that like on the side and he starts telling me jokes and like he's trying to change like the atmosphere so we wouldn't be scared and then we hear the fitting room door go bah, like freaking hard and i was like dude and hogar was like no no like don't be scared don't be scared he's like it was upstairs i'm like dude it was back there and then we hear the other door close so that was the door to go into the um into the um stock room and i started freak out i'm like dude I, my my first instinct was someone's in the store like i thought someone was in the store so Hogar was like, no, no, like, don't worry, don't worry. He closes the door. So there's a door. Like, if somebody were to break in, like, Tilly's has it set up where you have to have a door to come into that stock room. So nobody could come in. So he's like, dude, like, don't worry, don't worry. Like, we're safe in here. And then I was like, okay, like, but we still have to go. Like, what if someone is in here? What do we do? So he's just like, no, don't, like, finish your shit. Come on, like, let's, let's do this. And then we hear someone go, like, he, he says a joke or he says something. And like we kind of chuckle to each other and we hear someone from the from the manager's office so this is a door that he closed and then right here is the little desk where i send my dm stuff and then all of this is like um like the break table like it's like a tiny little like back stock room and then all the way towards the end is like mannequins on top of the roof and then on the bottom is a manager's office so in there is a little room you have to physically walk in there said we just hear someone go Shh, like legitimately go and his face he was like his eyes were just like like he was like i heard it you know he's like let's go like let's go and he starts making me freak out and i was like i was this close to having a panic attack and i was like don't leave me don't leave me please don't leave me he's like come on like let's just go like i don't care and i was like dude i didn't even send the emails like i was that scared i'm like i'm like don't leave me hogar like i swear do not leave me so i'm holding on to his arm so we open the door and no one's in the hallway i checked the restroom no one's there he's like sarai like let's go and I'm like, okay, so I, before you leave, you have to flip all the switches off. So there's like panels, like four panels of switches. So I make sure I'm still holding on to him and I go like this and I switch all of them off and I double check on my, and I look outside and everything's off. 
So we open the door to go out into the store. And then sure enough, like I'm walking and I'm going to be next to the fitting room, like the um, handicap room. So like I turn and it's closed and I'm, he's like, I just like that door was open. I'm like, okay, like, let's just go. Let's just go. So we're walking, like speed walking to the front. Everything is fine. And then, like I said, all the switches were off. So that turns off music, lights, TVs, fitting room lights. It turns off every single light off in the store. So we're, we're clocking out and so we're practically facing like towards the fitting room, like facing where we just came out of. And like I'm talking to Hogar and I'm asking him something and I turn to, towards, Ho towards Hogar and Hogar is just like, like this, like staring up into like God knows where. And I was like, I'm like, what, what, what? So I start freaking because I'm like, what is he staring at? Why is he doing that face? So like I turn like this and the first TV that's next to the fitting room was on. Like it was just on, but the thing is, if the TV is on, our Tilly's like um, our brands and stuff like that on the TVs. And the thing is, the TV was on, but it was all static. And I was like, "What the hell?" He's like, "Sad." I like we turn them off, we turn them off. And I was like, "I know, I know." Like, like it's it's probably just something's going on. And as soon as we said that, he was like, "No." He, he goes, "Somebody, somebody turn them on." And once he said that, the next two TVs turn on. And I'm fucking freaking out and I just see Hogar like jump over the freaking cash wrap No, go through the cash wrap and I jumped over the cash wrap because I was that scared I just set the alarm and I jumped over the that shit's tall, huh? It's tall Yeah. Like that's like it goes up to like my boobs like the cash wrap was like near my boobs No, kind of yeah, right like towards my waist. Yeah, like, like it was like near my waist Yeah, so like you legitimately had to like kind of get up and like go over so I put the alarm behind the backpacks and I fucking just jump over and Hogar's already at the door. What was that? What? I don't know, I heard something. No, that was me. What was that? I was saying. Yo, oh, the <laughs> What's that? Okay. What's that? So Hogar's already at the door. Homeboy fucking bounced on me and I'm freaking out and I could have sworn I heard something behind us. But I did not want to look, so Hogar's like, hurry up, hurry up, and I'm like, okay, okay. And I'm like, locking in, I lock the door, and he's like, dude, what was that, what was that? And I'm like, I don't know. So I'm like, I have to take a picture of it, though, to send it to them so that they can figure out what it was in the morning. So I take a picture of it, of like the, the like I take a picture of like the inside of the store just so that I could see the TVs, because you could see the TVs from there. And then I send it to an old friend of mine, and like, whatever, she like, responds. But what, like while I sent it to her, like she's viewing it or something. And I didn't realize that it was a live picture. So I send it to her. And then when I'm standing there, like it hit me. Like he was like, let's go home. And I was like, it clicks in my mind. I'm like home, my car, my keys, my keys, my keys are in the freaking stock room where we were just at locked in the back. So I remember throughout the day, the store manager found my keys on one of the Adidas tables. So he was like, Sarai, I'm going to go put your keys in the back manager's office. And I forgot to get them. So the keys are inside. And I'm like, oh, God, like, how am I going to get home? He's like, call your mom. Tell her to bring your keys. I'm like, oh, like, my mom's working. I'm like, oh, God. I legit, I was like, oh, God, I'll give you $100 if you go inside to get my keys. He's like, hell no. He's like, I'm not going to go in there. He's like, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. And I was so scared, but we had to go in because there was no way for me to go home. He was even like, I'll take you home. Like, I'm not going to leave my car because it's going to get towed. So we go back inside. I had to unlock the alarm and we had to go back back there, unlock everything. The lights were off and we get my keys and we go back. And I was like, hold up. And he's like, what? And I'm like, let me check if I switched all the lights off just to double check. And we check and everything is off. And I'm like, dude, so why are the TVs on? And we were like, we didn't know what the hell's going on. I don't know if the other TVs turned on while we were walking out or what happened. But pretty much as soon as we're walking out, this person that I send the picture to, she replies. She's like, dude, like there's something there. Look at it. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I'm already home. Like once I start getting those messages and she's like, you took a live picture. Look at it. So I'm like, what the fuck is a live picture? Like I didn't know what a live picture was back then until she told me she's like a live picture is like a motion picture, whatever. So I click on it. And she's like, look towards the fitting room and I'm going to insert it. But as soon as like pretty much like you click on it, you see someone running from the stock room all the way out towards like coming towards the front entrance kind of like. So you guys are going to see it. it's like a black shadow of like, I want to say it's a guy, like a man, huh? Yeah, like, it's like you could see a head move. Like a head, like from here up, like legit from here up, you can see someone move and it looks like a guy and he's running from like across the fitting rooms and it's 
freaking weird. So I sent it to Hogar. I was like, oh my God, like I told you something was in the store. And like I show it to everyone and everyone was like, I knew this store was haunted, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so I'll insert that right here. specific store was really scary i hated kind of working there like it was mm -hmm. it was freaky like after that i was just like oh hell no but i hope you guys enjoyed this video sorry for kind of like eating and talking and being all over the place but yeah um so if you guys like this video give me a thumbs up make sure to comment and subscribe and share with your friends and like i always say leave in the comments down below what you guys thought about this video and let me know if you guys have had any paranormal experiences yourself and then let me know what kind of um, videos you guys want to see from me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So like I always say, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.